Hi there, my name is Becca Feekin with Amazing Paper Grace, and I'm a licensed designer with Spellbinder Paper Arts. So I have a series of flowers that I wanted to tell you about. They are called Cinch and Go. These are all Cinch and Go flowers, and you'll see some characteristics. I like to clump all of the flowers together so that you can cut them in one pass on your cutting machine. I've done that so you don't have to chase them around the die cutting machine and you're going to get all the petals you need to make one flower. Also, each set typically comes with a leaf. And then the, the remarkable factor that you'll see about them is they all have a hole in the center and the hole is very, it's very important. So I'm going to be making flowers with Cinch and Go 3. Okay, to make the Cinch and Go flowers, of course, we need our die. But I'm also going to need a stylus and going to need some wire. And this should be a pretty thin wire so that you can actually bend it pretty easily. Just need to, you won't see it in the end, but it, it's actually going to be a holder for us. And then we're also going to need a spray bottle. I've gone ahead and taken the liberty of cutting quite a few of these. So I'll just go ahead and lay those out here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our water and spritz them so that they're wet. And this is kind of what feels good. There's no scientific to it at all. So with my spritz bottle, I'm going to go ahead and I've, I have a piece of plastic here so that my uh, mat doesn't get wet and I'm just going to spritz them. Now this doesn't mean douse them for all time, but you know, you do want to get some water on them. And then what I do is I turn them over. There's a saturation point with paper. And so that's what we're looking for is that saturation point. I want it to be mushy, but not so mushy that the paper is going to fall apart. So what I do is I kind of smush them around until I feel this go from paper to very, very flexible. So there we go. So I'm going to set these off to the side now because they're ready to start being worked with. I also have a little foam mat. It has quite a bit of give in it. And this is what I'm going to use with the stylus. So let me take the first petal and I'm going to lay that down. Now these were flowers that we die cut, but we didn't emboss because you don't need an emboss. So I'm actually going to burnish them by pressing down and pulling back. And that actually shapes the petal just like this. And I go all the way around. So I have a, a fairly big end on my stylus. Just press down and pull back, press down and pull back. And this gives some shape and some gesture to the leaves, I mean to the petals. You kind of have to decide is my flower all going up or is it all going down? So there we go, right there. So this one is done. What I typically do is I turn it over and then I poke in the center so that I have something like this. Okay, so I'm going to do that with actually all of my petals. And the stylus would be appropriately sized for the end of the petal. For instance, this one just fits in the end of that heart and it, it's going to work out better. So we'll do that and I will go around very quickly. And I want to make about two or three flowers so that I can cluster them together. Um, in, in this case, you know, all of these dyes are pretty much the same. They don't have natural uh, ragged edges or anything like that. And that is actually going to make it easier, um, you know, to put them together. So we want some of every size because in real life, petals come in different sizes. Now I've got the tiny one here. I'm going to go to the smaller stylus and do the same thing. I will caution you, the paper's wet. And if you get too rough with it, it would tear. So I'm just gently pressing and pulling back, pressing and pulling back. And we'll go through quite a bit, quite a few of these. So there we go. Set that off to the side. To put a flower together, as I said, you're going to need a piece of wire. And so there's my wire. And then you're also going to need 
a pearl with a hole in it. So I have some pearls. I'm just going to pick one out and lay it to the side. What we do is go through the wire, I mean the pearl, the hole in the pearl with the wire. And I generally fold the wire in half, make it to a point, and then twist. You see what I'm doing? I've put that down there at the end and uh, twisted it so that it stays down at the end. And the rest of this wire isn't really going to make a difference. It's just a holder. Okay, so I'm going to straighten that out now. Okay, so now comes the cinch and go part. I'm going to start out with my smallest petal, and I'm going to actually thread it on to the wire, and I'm going to send it all the way down to the end. Okay, like so. What I typically do is I will put a little dollop of um, hot glue in there so that um, the petals form around the flower, around the pearl. So I'll just go in here like this. Okay, I go in there like that with a dollop of glue and then pull that up and around. Okay, so now I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to put a dollop of glue right there. I'll pick up my second petal and this one I want to offset so that the petals don't fall the same in the same place. So I'll actually load it on right here. Okay. And then I'll let that glue take. So there, that's where we're at so far. And then I'll keep doing that. So I'll take a dollop of glue and put right behind it. And then I'll come on with another petal right through the flower. And then I'll offset those leaves so that they're in a different place. So we, we've made a flower. That's a flower. Let me just tilt it up so that you can see. Just like that. That's a cinch and go flower. It's that easy. So I typically leave them on the stem until I've figured out what to do with them. So now all I have to do is make a couple more and we'll put them on a card so that you can see what the end result is. I'm going to show you that I have this little uh, frame that has decorative paper inside. This is something I love to do and uh, the flowers are perfect. Just with a hot glue gun, I'm going to go in behind them and put some glue. And then what I'm going to do is bend down that wire so that it's not in the way at all. And I actually could have done that before the hot glue. And then I'm going to actually stick it to the frame. So, you know, here we have one of the flowers in place. I'm going to go ahead and bend this out of the way for the next one. Oh, and you're going to want to let, I'm working with my flowers are still a little bit wet. You're going to want to let them dry. I love to let them dry for actually an hour or two. Um, they'll have a, a little bit of a different texture. Um, and then when you come back, they'll be nice and solid so that you can put them on your project. Okay, so that's going to actually give us a frame that we can work it with. Of course, I'm going to come back and I'm going to do a sentiment or I'll put somebody's picture in that. But that's just a quick way to get embellishment flowers from a die. Ran the, the dies through three or four times, came out with all I needed, spritzed them, you know, stacked them up and they were ready to go. And that's why we call them cinch and go flowers. They're very easy, they're very pretty, and you don't have to have any special skill to mold them or, or make them in a certain way. I'm very glad that you would let me share them with you, and I hope that you use them on your cards and projects to come.